the question is what percentage of edta is used for removal of smear layer in root canals okay so um, when you are performing cleaning and shaping of the root canal system why do you perform this is first you have to achieve two main uh, proper objectives number one you have to remove whatever pulpal infected or necrosed pulpal tissue is there within the canal and two the inflammation or the infection is not going to be restricted only to the pulpal system but also the circumpulpal dentin a part of the circumpulpal dentin ends up being infected by the uh, infected tissue so what happens is that dentin is necrosed or it is not viable and it has to be removed so what you have to do is if you don't remove that dentine over there it is going to be creating a nidus for secondary infection and that is why you remove the dentine surrounding dentine or the surrounding circumpulpal dentine this is the first objective of cleaning and shaping the second objective of shaping and cleaning is you would want to ensure that your root canal filling material that you place within the canal after you have done cleaning and shaping is able to give a proper lateral coronal and apical seal so that there is no chance for entry of microorganisms or secondary leakage and you have a completely healthy tooth which can survive for a long period of time okay now when you are performing cleaning and shaping you need to ensure that your uh, instrument your rotary or your hand instrument that you are going to be using is able to remove the dentin without getting engaged in it so what do i mean by without getting engaged is see there is engagement in terms of the fact that it has to cut the dentine and remove the dentinal shavings however the instrument should not be able to lock itself completely into the dentine that when you are trying to be removing the instrument it gets lodged and it breaks so that should not happen so in order to prevent that you need to achieve two functions number 1 the entire root canal system should be completely lubricated and two it has to continuously be, be irrigated so that whatever shavings or uh, unnecessary broke uh, infected materials is there that can be removed out easily without causing further hindrance to instrumentation now when i talk about lubrication see you are going to be using the instrument and you are going to be performing a particular sort of a motion but when you are performing this motion the instrument has to come out if your instrument gets locked that means there are very high chances of it completely breaking in the canal to prevent that this lubricant is very important one of the most important more often than not your irrigant also acts as a lubricant so it is easy to remove however as we know the dentinal tissue is a hard tissue it is composed of calcium and minerals and it is not going to be removed easily so you would want to have a lubricant or rather you would want to use a material while using the instrument it also provides a lubrication effect and in addition to that it is it helps in easy removal of the calcified tissue so edta as we know is basically an acid which helps as a chelator of calcium so when it is going to be such a good chelator of calcium it is just going to be able to remove the inorganic component of the dentine and it is going to be able to lubricate the uh instrument and also help in easy retrieval of that dissolved dentine that is the reason why edta is a very commercially used uh lubricant in addition to that edta has been uh, combined with other materials which helps in additional functions for example edta can be combined with setavlon which is a surfactant what does the surfactant do it helps in opening up the dentinal tubules whatever remaining dentinal tubules are there so that whatever sealer you are using can penetrate the dentinal tubules much more and cause help in much more better seal okay at the same time edta can also be combined with hydrogen peroxide why is this hydrogen peroxide important is because when you call bring out activation of the irrigant what is this, what is going to be happening is it is going to be releasing nascent oxygen and as we know endodontic infections are polymicrobial infections and as we go deeper into the canal the microbial flora is going to become much more anaerobic so when you use hydrogen peroxide it is going to release this nascent oxygen and because of that it is going to be able to destroy your uh, anaerobic microorganisms thereby helping the entire system are much more better so you are uh, decreasing the chances of reinfection now a lot of studies were conducted as to the percentage of how much 
uh, EDTA should be used and based on whatever is there, this is a very theoretical question, but I have tried to explain it, explain as many aspects of EDTA as possible to you. The, you had a lot of uh, studies that were conducted and out of all of those studies, it was found out that 17% EDTA should to be having maximum efficacy in removing whatever smear layer as well as dentinal uh, layer that was present. So that you can bring about effective lubrication as well as removal of the dentinal shavings thereby helping in greater success of the root canal therapy and that is why that is the answer to the question over here.